So uh, today we're going to be looking at the new Edge of the Mist patch preview. Although, uh, well, to be honest, they didn't release any patch uh, notes yet, like they do with every other patch that they release. So basically, I'm just going to show you guys what I found on the content and what's available out there. So as you guys know, you most of you must have already seen the trailer. But uh, we're going to have a quick look see at the trailer uh, for, for, for starters. <coughs> And oh my god, does that look awesome, seriously. I think they did a really decent job and it was a long time coming for the map because we, we've had the same three maps for the longest time. So the main concern was the uh, queue and uh, you know how players actually get into the World v World servers before. If you were in a queue and there is some new content released for World of World servers, you would be staying static like in Lion's Arch for ages, you know, trying to get into that server or, you know, in some other area where there is no overflow. So in order to uh, fix all of those problems, they actually made a new UI system and a new uh, queue system. Uh, for which, uh, you know, that, that that actually enables you guys to actually stay in queue and see how many people are in front of you. And the whole new UI actually looks a lot better from, from this point on. Seriously, um, like it actually shows you how much time is remaining in the match. So uh, I'm, I'm believing that's something to do with the living world content whilst you're playing there. And yeah, uh, apart from that, in this actually this patch note actually reads about that. Uh, the fixes and the frustrations people and players were actually having in the past due to it. So uh, let's see what it says. Uh, it is vital to us that uh, we make the changes as a part of the release of Edge of the Mist, which introduces a brand new overflow map to World v World, allow allowing players to... <laughs> <clears throat> have smoothest experience as possible so that is a really good thing to be honest uh, the first time you will experience the new queue system is when you attempt to enter one of the existing world v world maps in uh, updated world v world ui screen uh, each map now has its own entry button uh, that contains information about the queue for that map so that's a really good plus so it tells you uh you know about each of the map and uh different uh, uh queues that are available for that map so if there is no queue the button will say ready and you can instantly join into the map so okay so that was uh, basically what they generally talk about in this uh, uh patch and uh, next up, I'm gonna show you what uh, you know. I actually saw uh, what was uh, going on in the live stream, and uh, I think Dolphy did a really good job in making those notes. And this is basically as close as uh, we could come to patch notes. So first of all, your world world map will be divided into three sections: the overgrowth area, the badland area, and the frost reach area. Uh, overgrowth is more of a green jungle, samana type area, you know, you'll have your spawns in this uh, mini ship over here that you see. Each uh, place has its own little uh, carrier ship. You actually spawn here, you come down here, there is a keep. 
it's kind of the same-ish layout as you have on your Eternal Battleground or you know other Borderland maps but you know they, they spiced it up you know removing a lot of the land masses from in between and uh, creating all sorts of destructible bridges and uh, a lot of small events that you can do and uh, a little bit of loving story included in that so really good uh, I'm, I'm really excited about this patch uh, you know to actually come down and play uh, in these three areas so overgrowth is more of the jungle themed uh, area and this will be towards uh, whatever team is colored red and uh, then badlands is basically a desertish area and each area would have its own uh, you know uh, atmosphere uh, or weather effects so badlands per se it's a desert area so it will have a lot of wind storms uh, you know uh, snow uh, sand dunes and all all sorts of different things so going on in this area frost reach will have a huge blizzard hitting it and uh, yeah uh, one other thing that they did uh, in order to reduce the amount of you know it, suppose if uh, one server had a lot less amount of people than the other what this system the new system would do is based on coloring in case your server has low population and uh, you know it, it does not have the amount of people that you would need to you know overcome the odds of you know having going against a bigger server what they did was they introduced a coloring system so you'll see these uh, three different colors and each week uh, different servers will be allotted that color and uh, you know tarnished coast can play with sanctum of all against blackgate or jade quarry or something of that sort so uh, basically that would enable you know even smaller servers to coordinate and actually take over bigger servers so that way both servers are earning points and you know uh, they did say all of the points that you earn in this area would not affect the overall well it will slightly affect the overall server score which is uh, which you normally play in uh, normal world we will you know borderlands eternal battleground and all that but uh, it will affect it a, a slight bit, not, not a huge amount will be affected from these areas. This is mostly for, you know, to level up your characters, for for world we will experience, you know, to in order for you to unlock all sorts of different, uh, you know, things on your flame ramp. Uh, let's go ahead and see what they talked about in the stream. Uh, when we originally announced EOTM, we are planning to only include players from your World v World matchup. Now we made it so uh, that servers with the same World v World color are now playing in the same team. So if Tarnished Coast and Anvil Rock are the green side for a week, uh, they will be going into EOTM as one team. So basically that actually enables you know low pop servers uh, to be able to play together against a higher pop server. So that is a really good thing because there, there are times when you're put up against big servers and your team, you try to do good but you can't because you don't have the amount of people to actually overcome the odds, you know. So it's all about numbers and strategy and, you know, proper coordination and if you don't have that, you know, uh, servers do eventually collapse so this would actually enable different servers to come together and you know f uh, fight together against a bigger server so yeah you can possibly see a lot of rivalry coming our way towards Blackgate uh, I I'm just really excited uh, I just want to see what goes down uh, this patch seriously it's, it's gonna be insane Sanctum of Vol teaming up with Jade Quarry or something going against us I don't know it's gonna be uh, or with Tarnished Coast or something, you know, it's, it's going to be fun to see how 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 how, you, how this uh, actually plays out. <clears throat> so uh, Victory and EOTM will provide supply drops to the Citadel in your Borderlands map. Uh, this is uh, only in connection between EOTM and your regular World v World maps. Supply pile uh, will give you 40 successful supply interacts. So that's basically to do with your uh, you know supply drops in your actual world as well, so it gets uh, Transferred and the new queue interface uh, which we actually already talked about I'm not gonna go there. We actually saw that already 
So living world elements will be there. Um, there will be a couple of living world elements, but they're not as prominent. So it's still a world we world map. So some bridges can actually be destroyed, like I talked earlier, uh, and you would need supplies to build them or repair them if you want to get into an area. So that that could mean uh, a huge zerg carrying a pile of uh, you know uh, supplies, repair up the bridge, and quickly force yourself into that area and move in and you know take down their uh, buildings and uh, well. Uh, their keeps uh, and because the, there are so many different ways you can actually um, enter into an area so you can uh, if you're coming from this side you can just take the bridge while the enemies on over on this side are trying to block you off here so you can actually flank them so a lot of lot of good things that they put on this map it makes the map more interesting to be honest so <clears throat> Uh, so can you, uh, your friends join in EOTM, ne need to join about the same time since uh, it is an overflow and it can fill up really quickly. So if you are joining with your friends, uh, join up at the same time because uh, uh, it, it's still an overflow and it still acts like an overflow. So make sure when you're joining in with your friends or your commander, uh, always do it together. So I would suggest, you know, uh, make an overflow uh, you know purposely and uh, go in there and start uh, you know you can start zerging in that overflow and uh, this uh, in turn you know you can stick with your teammates and stay coordinated in that way so that being said moving on so the keeps in each region will have a different mechanics or buffs on it so if you control the overgrowth keep uh, the altar observatory or sanctuary objectives you will gain an uh, accumulating boon in overgrowth. Boon give you passive regen, passive pulsating, condition removal, chance to do lightning strikes on your attacks. So yeah, when you're uh, actually capturing these areas, uh, the little uh, sanctuary observatory, if you have all of these under your control you get a special buff and it can be one of these three. So keep eye out on for that so always try to keep everything captured as much as possible so alter uh, in uh, overgrowth region completing the event in alter transforms you into an elemental that you can make immune for three minutes and good for scouting so there uh i'm not sure if she has a picture of it but you actually get turned into a tiny little uh, elemental you cannot be hit you're invulnerable and you can actually go into enemy uh, behind enemy lines and scout the area out and you'll be immune for a good three minutes so this is this is seriously insane you can actually go into enemy territory where there's zergs going by and not get killed and actually report to your commander what's going on so it's like a spy induction into that area so <laughs> This seriously opens up a lot of possibility. Down in Sanctuary, uh, they actually have cannons. Uh, they're super cannons. Uh, you can actually shoot insane amount of ranges with them. And uh, once you do, you can actually hit the uh, other side's gate and, um, you know, uh, Badlands Outer Gate, like, like it says here. So the maximum range will be able to hit that. And um, you can actually take down gates uh, using those cannons and, you know, infiltrate before you actually attack them. So that is a really sweet mechanic that they've added onto the map. So the workshop in Badlands region, the char NPC will uh, actually transform you into a mecha devour, uh, devourer, uh, which you can uh, use to stealth or create sandstorms and shadow steps, siege gates. But uh, you cannot um, jump or, you know, and it, <clears throat> in addition, it's kind of slow. So make sure when you're using it, you know, you're, uh, you have backup, some sort of, uh, you know, you're kind of like so small tanks. And you would need infantry to move up with you uh, t in order to protect you. So make sure uh, that you have some kind of backup when you're using these mecha drawers because they have no... Um, protection of their own except for the few three skills that you get so the next is turrets and badland regions are no longer player controlled due to 
uh, bad. Uh, okay, so this is one of the updates uh, that there was a bad feedback on some kind of cannons. So uh, in Badlands, they actually showed it in the stream. There, there are going to be airships in the Badlands region. Um, basically, you can uh, purchase them in order to get in uh, or call in airstrike grenades, uh, which will actually drop on to uh, your enemies. I'm not sure how this mechanic will play out, but I'm really curious to uh, you know see how this actually works. So uh, next up is your weather, which we already talked about. And so the next one would be the bucket jump, and this would probably be an achievement that you'll get uh, from jumping off all the towers. So every tower has a bucket. You can jump into it. Uh, it teleports you to the top of the tower. Siege deployments is blocked there and it gives you a really good 360 view of the area so it's really good for scouting as well seeing where the enemy players are and reporting it out back to your uh, you know uh, commanders so you'll have diving goggles up there and you can actually aim into the bucket and if you do make it into the bucket bling achievement <laughs> so they did add a lot of new achievements so as you can see here Oh my god, those seriously are a lot, and uh, that's gonna increase a, a lot of my achievements too. I'm, I'm definitely gonna try and hit for my 8000k uh, chest this month around, hopefully. Let's see. I'll probably take it slow, but yeah, we, we will get there. So, the QOL changes uh, increased uh, Dragonite Ore. So, basically, these are the loot changes. Uh, they've increased the amount of Ascended drop rate and the weapon armor. And uh, even in guild missions and in Takwadal, they've increased this. Uh, and this is a really good thing. This actually motivates player to actually come and play these things. Now, they have actually said Ascended Armor and Weapons. So that's a really big plus because uh, before it was only uh, Weapons. You would only get, you know, uh, something from Takwadal. Like, uh, you get a chest of hoard, uh, which you open up, you get to... Uh, pick whatever weapon you want and now you can do the same for the armor so good luck guys I hope you do get one of these bad boys in one of those chests so <laughs> and the last thing is the quag uh, and uh, finisher so yeah I'm not even gonna speak just have a look at this it looks so freaking awesome I've never seen anything <laughs> like it but that that is a really cool finisher. I I guess uh, start saving up on the money, guys. Cause seriously, I'm I'm buying this first day. I'm I'm definitely gonna get it. I'll definitely be dropping those quaggins on a lot of uns unsuspecting uh, uh, guys. Have fun, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. And hope you guys have fun on the battlefield. Later.